I'll be honest, as I start this video I have no idea how it will turn out. I'm coming into it with many thoughts in mind and it could just end up being me ranting. But I will try to clarify the point I have in mind by the end, in a way that will help you understand how this impacts your life. The recent marketing campaign for the Sonic the Hedgehog movie got me thinking about how nostalgia, and more importantly, how memory influences our behaviour and what we do in life. With that in mind, I wanted to do a video where I deconstruct some of the reasons how nostalgia and memory play a role in our lives, why so many films today target popular 80s and 90s franchises, and most important of all, what you need to understand about memory and its primary role in our lives. So if that sounds of interest, then stay tuned and by the end of the video I will try to sum up the key points to take away to benefit your own life as well as why the Sonic the Hedgehog movie coming out garners the attention it gets. How does memory work? Now, before we get into the depths of the importance of memory and how this can influence our behaviour, it's worth understanding the principal mechanics of how memory works. When we talk about memory, we often think of them as neat boxed packages that we recall. To put an analogy on the idea, Think of it as a library full of books, with each one representing different memories. The truth is, memory is much more fluid, almost like a web of information that we pick out bits and pieces from to eventually build up our memory. So why is this useful to know? Well, it explains why we struggle to easily remember information and more importantly, why our memory of something varies from the reality of what it actually was. Take Sonic for example, we often have memories of the classic 90s games being great fast paced platformers where players would stream across the screen at lightning speeds. However, while my memory of the game is to blitz through levels, I know I'd spend a great deal of time in frustration, slowly traversing my way jumping on platforms and getting annoyed at some of the floaty controls. The movie will no doubt try to play on what we enjoyed, and it's through the pleasurable memory recalls that we get drawn to what we conceive to be great childhood memories. So this begs the question, what happens as you recall memories? There are three types of memory recall, called free recall, serial recall, and queued recall. So with regards to free recall, people will often try to remember an event or some information, usually finding that the primary or recency effects take place. Imagine you had a shopping list and had to try and remember what was on the list. Often, the primacy effect takes place as you remember items at the top of the list early on and with greater regularity. The recency effect takes place as the last items on the list are recalled more often as they were the last aspects of the memory. So with free recall types, what you will often find is that as you recall memory, you start at the end, then remember how it began, before you proceed to fill in what happened in the middle. A quick tip to remember regarding this is that if you ever have to make an important point to someone, start and end your point with the most important information, as they'll be more likely to remember it. The second recall type is serial recall, whereby an individual seeks to remember their memory in the order that the events took place. This is something we commonly do when telling stories to people we know. We work our way through the individual events of the story as we piece it together. What's interesting here is that it varies in short term memory and long term memory, as in the latter, it's often through repetition that we commit the whole memory as a serial memory, such as learning to play a piece of music. The last, and the most relevant to how Sonic the Hedgehog is likely to use the nostalgia effect to his cued memory, whereby cues are given to help our recall of memory. I was listening to the official song for the Sonic movie, and it's peppered with sound effects from the games, whether it be collecting rings, spinning, or bouncing around. The song has no reason for any of these sounds other than to make us think back to the Sonic games, which as already mentioned we recall with some positivity, even if through rose tinted glasses. Can you trust your memories? So with all that's been said about how memory works like a web, and how we build up memories from breadcrumbs of information, 
How trustworthy is our memory? Well, it will vary from individual to individual, and it can vary from being extremely reliable to not at all. What's important to note is our memory needs to be understood if we're to use them to be a benefit to us. What's really vital to understand is that cued recall can equally be used to influence or even manipulate our emotional feeling towards past events. This is what happens when we feel nostalgic about something. We have cues to remind us of the good things that happened, conveniently avoiding the frustrations from the past. Why release Sonic the Hedgehog? I don't want to come across as being overly cynical and will wait to see whether Sonic the Hedgehog is actually a good movie, but from everything I've seen, it seems that this movie has been created to play on the nostalgia people have about the character and games in the past. This is something that's commonly done today, especially in the movie industry that constantly tries to build hype and nostalgia based on past properties, whether it be to try and utilise fan interest or reinvent a franchise for a modern audience, usually in an attempt to appeal to parents past love and at the same time introduce it to their children. Possibly my biggest issue with films built on nostalgia is that they have a tendency to fail to live up to expectations, as often they play on the desire to recreate very personal feelings of the past, which is simply not possible. What does this mean for you? Ok, so we've come to understand how memory works, how we recall memories and how this can be of benefit to us, but equally detrimental to our decisions and behaviour. The key thing is, what do we take away from all of this? Well, we know our memory serves a purpose to help us learn, equally so, we can't reclaim the past once it's gone, so we shouldn't be aiming to return to what's already been, equally so, we can't just plan and live in the future, as if for no other reason, it's never a given, it will be as you hope, but to only focus on the future is to ignore the present you need to consider the future, so that you can have direction to where you want to be, but to build to that future means to work in the present. Likewise, you can't only be in the present, as your past experiences can help you understand what to do in the present circumstances, which is how we've evolved as humans. Likewise, as previously mentioned, if you want to achieve goals in life you need to know what future you're aiming for so you need to have conscious awareness of the future you see for yourself. So with all that said, our memory and our understanding of time means that we need to factor all three, use memory to learn from the past, have direction in life by thinking of your future, but importantly, live and act in the present with the past and future in mind. Do you intend to watch the new Sonic the Hedgehog movie? Let me know in the comment section below, please like, share and subscribe as we help you live life on your terms, don't forget to hit the bell icon to ensure YouTube notifies you of the latest uploads, thanks for watching.